Hello and welcome back. I'm Tim Hunt, the head of the Rabo research team here in Australia and New Zealand. We're live streaming from the F2F Rabobank event here on Cockatoo Island in Sydney. We're starting to bring the speakers off the main stage to share with you some of your, their insights. And I'm really pleased to have with me Professor David Lindenmeyer, who's the research professor at ANU. That's and correct. Officer of the Order of Australia, nonetheless, for services to conservation and the environment. David, your, your topic was about the challenges and opportunities in sustainable farming. What were the, the main challenges that you are addressing? So there are, there are several things that are really confronting farmers at the moment. So clearly the climate is changing very rapidly. Temperatures are increasing in this part of the world. Rainfall is declining quite yep. dramatically. We also have challenges associated with storing large amounts of carbon as part of tackling climate change. Biodiversity loss has been very significant in agricultural areas, but there are also issues to do with profitability, maintaining uh, productive landscapes, issues yep. with land degradation, but also farmer mental health. That's a really big issue as well. So we have this, this sort of swirl of five or six really big challenges that, you know, are not trivial things that farmers have got to deal with. Yep. And one of the, the, way, the things I liked about the way you addressed it is, you saw the linkages between all these things. None of them are independent, are they? That's correct, that's correct. And yep. the, the sustainable farming project that we now have at ANU is actually the intersection of <laughs> College of Business and Economics looking yep. at farm profitability and productivity, yep. the, the National Centre for Mental Health Research looking at farmer mental health, and then the Fenner School which is looking at ecological and environmental condition and restoration. And there's actually quite a strong set of linkages between all of those, those things. So, Better environmental conditions lead to better productivity and better, better uh, farm profits, but yep. they also lead to better farmer mental health and better profitability also reinforces farmer well-being as well. So there's th that intersection is really important across yep. those topics. Yep. So four main challenges, sustainability, uh, biodiversity issues, profitability and mental health. Uh, most of our audience will be familiar with the challenges around those things. Where do you see the opportunities coming out of these? Oh, there are massive opportunities, especially in a country like Australia, where we have some of the, the best farmers, most innovative farmers, people that are, that are adjusting to, to the really challenging conditions that are thrown at them. And, and so our work, based on long-term studies going back almost 20 years in many cases, is indicating that there are ways that you can enhance the condition of natural assets on farms, like farm dams, shelter belts, patches of remnant vegetation, streamlines and creek lines, rocky outcrops. You can manage those to produce multiple co-benefits. You, know, you better manage farm dams, you get better water, you get better productivity from your land, you get better weight gain in your livestock, you get a carbon benefit, you get a biodiversity outcome. These are really important micro hotspots for biodiversity. Yep. This is a win-win-win outcome. Yep. And the other thing that was really interesting, Tim, was that many of our landowners were, were putting their picnic tables around these remodelled farm dams. Yep. That's where they're having their glass of wine or their, their, you know, their bottle of beer with their partner, satisfied that they'd actually done something to promote yep. the productivity of their land. It was a good outcome. And, and helps with social connectivity. Then. Absolutely, yep. absolutely. And, and when we have farm demonstration days, we take people out onto their properties and they tell other, other farmers about what they've done. Yep. That's the place we go for the barbecue at the end. Yep. And, and the bottle of beer and the sausage and, and yep. you know, white bread. It's, yep. it's these places that people have altered and nurtured and, and enhanced the quality of what they've yep. done. And they can see those assets actually deliver multiple yep. benefits. It's, it, but it's, it's not just as simple as building a dam, is it? Be, uh, because uh, not, not every farmer can go out and build a dam from a regulatory perspective. And, and there, are, um, there are probably good reasons why everyone can't put, it, put one in. So what do you see as sort of the barriers to rolling out? That is it a simple awareness? People don't realise the benefits of, of development like that? Or, or are there other hurdles or barriers we have to overcome to unlock that sort of... Game. Well, I think there's, there's a few barriers, but they're not insurmountable. W one is that if we look at the literature across Australia in the science, in the science world, there's almost no science around this space. And so we're just beginning this kind of work to be able to demonstrate, for example, that average weight gain for livestock drinking high quality water 
is 23%. So that means that a cow that should weigh 400 yep. kilos weighs 320 kilos. Compared to if they're drinking low quality water. That's right, yeah. that's right. And there are ways to remodel existing farm dams yep. through planting around those areas, fencing around those areas, creating a hardened access surface to the water, deepening the dam so the water actually stays there for longer. So this yep. is part of drought resilience yep. as well as water quality and biodiversity. Yep. And, and so this is a process of getting information out to people to understand that there are real, very much substantial benefits, yep. return on investment for, for doing some of these interventions. Yep. So that's a, a really nice, clear example of, of a relatively simple strategy to unlock benefits in these four areas. What's another good example of, of something you've found works in this space? Oh, another really good example would be remodeling shelter belts. So right. this is providing shelter for livestock. So there's pretty good evidence now to show that well-managed shelter belts that are of the right dimensions, you know, reasonable in terms of width and length and with an understory, they're very, very important for lambing success. Yeah. They're very important for providing shade. Mm -hmm. So particularly for, for some kinds of livestock like Angus, very important for, for that. Particularly in this extreme weather, it reduces the water consumption, but it, uh, it adds to weight gain. But if we do these shelter belts in the right way, we get a biodiversity benefit yep. and we get a carbon benefit. Yep. And so again, there are these multiple win, win, win outcomes with using a bit of science to underpin how we, we remodel and rethink and plan the, the natural yep. assets on farms. Yep. And David, these things are all challenges that farmers face all around the world to greater or lesser extent. You started off by saying you felt Australia was particularly well placed uh, to capitalise on opportunities uh, uh, here. Uh, why do you think that? I think that because we have a very literate farming community who are very receptive to ideas. We have a, that literate farmer community is, is looking at ways to experiment with things to, to make it better and yep. adjust things to their local conditions. We've got a strong uh, research community, many of whom are keen to get out there to see their latest science then adopted on the ground. Yep. And increasingly, we've also got state government agencies that are recognising that there needs to be that link between science and and practical application on the yep. ground. So yep. we really are in a good position to, to take advantage of these things. And we have to because we're dealing with some of the most challenging conditions yep. for farming anywhere on the planet. Yep. So David, you've done some very valuable work around uh, the, the relationship between sustainability, biodiversity, profitability, and mental health. You, you've done some work unlocking examples of how we can turn that into an opportunity. Uh, what what do we need to do to get this out and, and ensure uh, awareness of that and greater application of, of the strategies you're suggesting? So one of the key things is for the science translation. Yep. And so what we do is we have farm demonstration days where we select farmers that have done particular things on their farms, particular yep. kinds of interventions, and we bring other farmers and members of the community, people that are involved in natural resource management and increasingly bankers yes. and other people in the finance sector to come and see how these natural assets function and what things can be done to improve their condition and quality. Yep, fantastic. Well, thank you very much for, for joining us here at Rabo F2F and Livestream. Uh, we all have a huge incentive in, in dealing with these challenges and to the extent we can turn that into an opportunity in the way you're outlining That'd be fantastic. Thank you and thanks for your time and it's wonderful to be here at an amazing event like this. Thank you very much. Yep.